One of the greatest and most common fears that people have is drowning, and throughout history it's been used as a method of execution for a wide variety of crimes. During the medieval period and later centuries, witches were often subject to drowning or being dunked in rivers. Some witches were thrown into rivers with stones to weigh them down, and if they rose up to the surface they were deemed witches and then later executed, but if they didn't, they would be killed anyway. This brutal way of working out if women were witches resulted in dozens of deaths, and also other tools were used such as ducking stools, where women were lowered into water for a significant time. Drowning was used for other crimes and reasons, and it's recently been used in the world. But why is it one of history's most brutal execution methods? Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. One reason why different cultures and countries throughout the years used drowning to execute criminals was because of a belief that shedding the blood of royals, the king, queen or members of the royal family, was wrong. They did not want to spill royal blood, and in Cambodia this was used as a way of putting the royal family to death. Execution using drowning was described in Burma also as, when a person of royal extraction is to receive a capital punishment, it is generally done by drowning. In the first place, the person is tied hands and feet, then sewed up in a red bag, which again is sometimes put into a jar, and thus a prisoner is lowered down into the water, with a significant weight to sink him. This practice is resorted to because it is reckoned a sin to spill royal blood. But in other Eastern Asian countries, it was done to protect the royal privilege of avoiding having the blood being spilled, so methods such as beheading, hanging, drawing and quartering, and using animals to kill, could not be used. In the Kingdom of Assam, the lower courts of justice could only order executions by drowning, death by cudgelling, with clubs on the head and so on. This belief of not spilling blood has also been linked to religion, as medieval priests would not spill blood even when they fought, using clubs in battle. But in other Islamic countries, the belief of bloodshed of the royals was also found. One man from Thailand was drowned at sea, and in the Ottoman Empire, it was used to execute the brothers of the chosen sultan, to prevent political succession crisis, drowning other possible heirs. They also used strangulation to ensure blood was not shed. This belief was also found in African cultures, but in Europe, drowning had been used for centuries. It was linked strongly to witchcraft and other crimes, but it was outlawed in many countries during the 1500s. The final drownings in some German lands came in the 16th century, but there were many cases of drowning. In 1580, executioner Franz Schmidt managed to get the practice of drowning banned, and instead convinced the local authorities to use beheading or hanging instead. In 1562, in Rothenburg, a woman was drowned for killing her child, and a number of women guilty of this crime were also drowned. In some lands, drowning was replaced by other execution methods, such as using the braking wheel, and some countries did later outlaw it. But in some places, there were specific pits and areas where drowning executions took place. The drowning pits or drowning pools were also known as murder holes or murder pools, and were specifically used for executing women and girls, especially inside of Scotland. If there was a lock or a river found near to a hill or mound, the local official would announce the death sentence on the hill to the crowd, before the condemned was then taken to the river and drowned in the pit. In Scotland in 1057, drowning pits were put into legal use, as King Malcolm Canmore said that every baron should have a pit or a well, which was used for executing women. In some of these sites, there has been a collection of bones found, showing that people were executed there, and then buried next to the river. Some drowning pits were simply holes with water in them, or some were locks which were still. But some were more advanced and had ladders in them. The condemned person would be forced to climb the ladder, and then the ladder was taken away. Some of the drowning pits had hurdles in them, which were then used to hold the person on, before they were lowered below the water level and drowned. Men at the time were hanged on the gibbet, and women were drowned in rivers and pits. It was considered by some a less violent death, succumbing to the river or the lock as opposed to gibbeting, which was very brutal and very public, with bodies being left on display for some time. Some drowning pits were also found close to the house of a clan chief or a baron, and also there were many gallows that sat very close to water. 
A pit or ditch then did not have to be made. There were some drowning pits which utilised ditches and the landscape. On Gallows Hill in Cruden, criminals were executed by a deep pool which was found nearby in the water, where many women were drowned. In the drowning pools of Ballymore, in the pit, there were many women criminals, murderers, and even women accused of witchcraft that were killed there. One is also found near a castle, where there was a small piece of water at the foot of a gibbet, where women were executed beneath the men. In Strayton, there is also a murder hole, which is rather marshy, and others can be found across Scotland. The practice may have also spread to England, as the owner of Baynard's Castle, during the reign of King John, was allowed to drown traitors in the River Thames in London. This was used for many people considered pirates also, and one example of drowning on the Thames includes Alice Tankerville. She was a thief who, along with her husband, was arrested, but Tankerville then fell in love with a beefeater who worked at the Tower of London during her imprisonment there in the famous fortress. She convinced him to help her escape, and they did manage to flee the tower, but were later captured shortly after by the night's watchmen. Her beefeater friend was later racked and was hanged in chains above the Tower of London, but both Tankerville and her husband were then hanged in chains at the low watermark on the River Thames, and then as the river rose, the pair were drowned and killed. Also, keel hauling used by sailors, which was punishment for mutiny or rebellion, in which sailors were passed under the keel of the ship, resulted at times in drowning, as it was so dangerous. It was also used during the Crusades by Richard the Lionheart, for any of his soldiers who killed any other fellow soldiers on crusade inside of the Holy Lands. But drowning was a method of execution used by many different countries to punish a number of different crimes. Probably today it is most remembered for being a punishment and brutal death for those poor women who were accused of witchcraft. Sadly, over the centuries, thousands of innocent women were drowned across the world after they were falsely accused of being involved in witchcraft or sorcery or other antics. It was a brutal death, but was regarded by some as kinder than other methods applied to others such as gibbeting or hanging, drawing and quartering. But drowning today remains one of people's most common fears, and the execution method was a brutal way of killing many different people who were criminals, and many of them were women. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.